Yeah, these environmental documentaries, they are kind of, I mean, I think more than anything, they're, pro they're trying to influence consumers to make different choices. And perhaps companies will realign. I mean, when you look at how, you know, places like McDonald's have changed their menu or a film like Supersize Me, Morgan Spurlock, uh, <clears throat> I don't want to get a whole discussion, but yeah. um, soda sales have dropped dramatically to the point where Coke and Pepsi, you know, um, those companies now sell water. They have their own, uh, you know, what, Dasani and Aquafina are the Coca-Cola, Pepsi brands for water. So soda sales continue to diminish because that kind of constant intake of sugar. So these documentaries can have a good effect. I think, I think that, I think, here's, here's my theory is that I don't think we live long enough if, as humans to actually notice, yeah. like, if we sat and watched a tree grow, I mean, it would take years, and then you see, oh, well, yeah. So I don't think we live long enough to notice these changes. And there was an interest, another article that showed what uh, certain cities will look like in the year 2100. What's interesting is Miami's pretty much gone. New Orleans is gone. Other places, like, they'll be flooding. But one of the most unaffected places is actually Southern California, what, right where we are. Because you would lose the Santa Monica Pier. All of that would be gone. That beachhead would be gone. But everything else would be pretty much okay because um, Los Angeles is at, a very, is at a much higher elevation than these other places. So, yeah, those environmental documentaries are tough. I mean, they're, they're, I, I understand what they're doing, but they are kind yeah. of depressing can't they make them into more of a comedy 